throughout the nation and around the globe. From his heart to yours, it's Dear James Live, bringing you intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions. Hello, beautiful soul family, and welcome to Weekly Wisdom and Insights, your home for spiritually guided transformation and empowerment. I am your host, Dear James, and together with the Unseen, Spirit, Source, and Symphony, we look at the current energies, we take your questions and comments live throughout the broadcast, and we see, we go as guided, we listen to our soul source connection. It is the one we arrive with in this world, it is the one we leave with, and it is the one that is most paramount, and you will see in today's show, we have some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful energies playing out today um, and in this moment, in this time for uh, today's show. And so as we always do, place in the comments, give a shout out, say hello uh, and from where, and then throughout the broadcast, put your comments in as things are resonating and we will check in with you throughout the broadcast. So let's jump into it. We have this very unique, as I said, they're beautiful energies um, and it's a, it's really a beautiful story this week. Um, it is about the what underlines and underlies the entire book um, of the Yijing. And so this beautiful book of changes, as it's known, and how that is foundational, substantial in our lives. Welcome, Lorna. And so we have that playing out. Yesterday was the Lion's Gate, the peak of the Lion's Gate, 8-8. We have that as an overlay to the message, which is very unique. Um, and then we have this third message that really is the bulk of the message, which is the it's 1661. So I'm just going to bring this beautiful image up for a moment so you can see. And when you just sit with the power of the, of the image and the numbers, hexagram 16 is about enthusiasm. It's mere opposite, if you will. It's counterpart. In, in this way, is 61, inner truth. And it's about how we utilize enthusiasm, you know, to find our inner truth, to um, embolden it, to bring it about. But it's the 1661. So I'm getting ahead of myself, but that's where we're headed. Ava, welcome. Um, so let's look at the current energies, and then we're going to talk about the Lion's Gate because this Lion's Gate, and remember from last week, let me just bring this up again, this beautiful image about, um, hopefully you all can hear me, put a, put a shout out in the comments if you can hear me, it says the sound disappeared, so I'm hoping that that's not the case, it shouldn't be, um, let me know. Um, so we have this from last week. We have this whole from 8 1 to 8 30 playing out, blinded by the light, taking charge, mercy me, X marks the spot, oath sworn, chopsticks, and it's time and double and double eight. So thank you, Lorna. Appreciate that. Uh, welcome, Olivia. Welcome, Dr. Sue. Welcome, Alicia. So we have this, remember from last week, we have this, they've given us an overlay from 8-1, these double full moons, super moons, 8-1 to 8-30. And so there's this moment in time that they're talking about right now, this month of August. Then we have in, within it the Lion's Gate. And the Lion's Gate so let's talk about what is the Lion's Gate. And the Lion's Gate has to do with Sirius, the, the, the star, Sirius. And I'm just going to bring up this image for you all. So Sirius is when, uh, I'm sorry, the Lion's Gate is when the sun is in Leo. So the Leo sun, the star Sirius, and you see it at the bottom right of your screen. There's a, a white dot that says, and then Sirius. So the star Sirius and then Orion's belt, and those are the three stars directly above it. You see a pale purple line with an arrow connecting to the dots in the belt of Orion and Earth. So Earth, Leo Sun, the star Sirius, 
and, and the stars in Orion's belt, they all align in a perfect line. And remember from last week, they said, I said, they're showing me the image of like this. Everything is perfectly aligned. Like they're lining things up to bowl strikes, like this perfect alignment. And that is what the Lion's Gate, and it runs from 726, so July 26 to 812. The height of the height of it was yesterday, 88. It's the pinnacle moment. And it's this perfect alignment. And with that, it's also kind of known um, by some as the Galactic New Year. And so that's what the Lion's Gate is. And then they're showing this. So the unseen is is saying to me, is, is saying to us, there's this overlay of this window of time. And let's just look at the astrological influence. I'm going to bring that up next. And what they're talking about with this Lion's Gate and this 8-1 to 830 and this overlay is truth and transformation. And you're going to see how hexagram 61, inner wisdom and trust. So truth and transformation. You know, the truth will set you free, right? We know this idiom, this statement. So the truth will set you free. Well, truth and transformation, the truth and trust will transform us. And so on 8-1, there's the super sturgeon full moon in Aquarius. It was at nine degrees. On 8-8, yesterday was the Lion's Gate portal, the, the pinnacle of it. On, I believe it's Sunday coming up, on 8-13, Sun and Venus retrograde, it's a Sun-Venus Kazemi. And what a Kazemi is, is when the Sun and Venus are, like, right next to each other. Like, and it's at 20 degrees. It's in the seventh house. This is very interesting. You'll see the seventh house in a moment later in the show. Um, and so, but this in Leo, 20 degrees, seventh house. And then on the 16th next week, we have the Leo new moon, and then at the end of the month on 8.30, this super blue moon. It's like, you know, that staying once in a blue moon, it's when you have two full moons in the same month. It's rare. And so, and it's also a super moon, so it's closest to Earth. And it's in Pisces at 7 degrees on the 30th. So we have this beautiful truth and transformation, this moment in time, 8.1 to 8.30, and this overlay of the Lion's Gate. And what they said was, they, you know we have that phrase, taking a page? Well, they changed it. They, they struck through taking and they said, playing a page from the past. Repeat, do over, slam dunk, exclamation point. So what does that mean? What it means is during this time frame, we're playing a page from the past. And you'll notice uh, Venus is retrograde. Mercury will be retrograde by uh, in the month of August into September. There's going to be a lot of planets going retrograde, like five or six of them are going to be retrograde. And retrogrades are about a do-over. It's a slow down, gear down. It's a repeat. It's a revisit. Put an RE in front of most things. Revisit, relook at, reimagine, repurpose. There's a lot of re-looking at things. And so here the unseen is saying, playing a page from the past. So it's going to be that it's playing is meaning it's actionary, it's happening, it's occurring. And there's a beauty in this statement, what I'm receiving in the moment from them, and it's a very high octave, uh, it just makes me smile. It's a very high octave energy that says, we're playing a page from the past which means we're going to go up an octave. And they've been talking about this for some time, you know, going back to where we began, but an octave higher. So there's a heightening. And then they had me place 8-1 on the left, 8-30 on the right. So here's this window of time. And then they, ha they have this bold statement, what you never saw coming, and then it's underlined. And so what they're saying to us is, in this moment of time, in this window of time, what you never saw coming. So we can see that from a, a cosmic perspective, a world perspective, like the world stage. Macro down to the micro, like what within our own lives, you know, it's, it's uh, Uranus, it's expect the unexpected. 
And interesting because Venus and the sun, Venus, how we love, how we, our emotions, our feelings, part of that is the moon, but the beauty, Venus, beauty, love with the sun, how it magnifies. So it will magnify these elements. So all of this is an, an overlay. And then they had, and then I heard, I started hearing the lyrics to the song, Age of Aquarius. And so let me just bring that up really quickly. Um, when the moon is in the seventh house and Jupiter aligns with Mars, then peace will guide the planets and love will steer the stars. This is, of course, from the musical Hair. Hair. It's Aquarius, Let the Sun Shine In. Um, it's by the fifth dimension. Some of these things are, you know, there's, <laughs> I believe this is from 1969 is when this came out. And so it's very interesting. There are no mistakes. And it goes on to say, the lyrics go on, this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Harmony and understanding, sympathy and trust abounding. No more falsehoods or derisions. Golden living dreams of visions, mystic crystal revelation, and the mind's true liberation. Aquarius, Aquarius. And it goes on to repeat the chorus line of when the moon is in the seventh house. So there's this beauty. Welcome, Brigitte. There's this beauty about this message. They're, see, they're saying to us, and this age of Aquarius, this age of enlightenment, this golden age. This returning to something, to this, and how playing a page from the past, remember the, the Aquarian age, the golden age, existed before. It, it occurred before. And this is this repeat, do over, slam dunk, like a fait complete. We're lining everything up, this perfect alignment for these things to come through, to come to fruition, to permeate our being. And then I want to bring up, um, I found this article, it's by Gwen Dungy, um, and she's an a educator and so forth, and I, I just found this fascinating. So let me, she said, in 1969, Good Morning Starshine and other songs from the Broadway musical Hair were the catechisms and prayers on the lips of her generation. We were spiritually struck by and literally infected with the songs from the musical. Many people knew the lyrics to all the songs, and even though we lived on a shoestring, we bought the album and played it over and over again. She's speaking about her personal experience. The song everyone recognized from Hare was Aquarius, Let the Sun Shine In. The feelings evoked by the song confirmed our alignment with the universe and with humanity. During the turbulent, war-torn times and political schisms of the late 1960s, all laced with violence and brutality, this song, in the opinions of many of the young, was one way to imagine all of humanity on the same page. Singing in unison, in unison with the singers on the recordings was liberating and hopeful at a time when we, as young people, felt constrained and misunderstood. Astrology was one thing we could trust and believe in. We didn't always live up to our own expectations or those of others. We didn't have to take full responsibility for our shortcomings because some things were preordained. Uh, were preordained. According to our astrological sun signs, we all had parts that we might not boast about, but there were always the good parts we could hold on to when we needed a boost. We could always choose to see ourselves in the best and most flattering descriptors of our sun sign. The balance in the descriptions made us whole. Though it sometimes felt as if fate had dealt us a bad hand, we had faith that one day, when the moon is in the seventh house and Jupiter aligns with Mars, then peace will guide the planets and love will steer the stars. It was, this was so beautiful and so perfect because it fits perfectly with 1661. Enthusiasm, youth, the innocence of life, and 61, this inner wisdom and to trust. And so, and it's just, it, it, it's ringing that this, and this is the first time, by the way, first time that the unseen, as you all know, 
as I showed you last week. And whether I'm doing a personal reading or I'm doing the shows, the weekly wisdom and insights, I sit down with an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and I listen, I intuit, and I write it down. Well, this was the first time where they had me also get a half of a half, you know, a half of a whole page. And I'm like, and so they had me write about the Lion's Gate and the age of Aquarius and everything on this half sheet of paper to overlay it on to the full eight and a half by 11. The fact and, and this keen awareness of there's an overlay. So imagine the backdrop, you know, the foundation, the backdrop are the weekly insights, are these energies. It's this wisdom by the unseen. And then here is this massive overlay of this moment in time. And how back from the late 60s, turmoil, unrest is playing out. And yet there was hope in this song, in the air. There was a vitality, a, an innocence, an empowerment to it. And they're bringing that back to the forefront for us. They're bringing it back to our awareness, to our attention, to realize that's what's playing out right now. That's what's in this window of time. And against the backdrop then of war, there is a world a war going, not a world war, but a war going on that is in the world headlines. And there is all of this strife and upheaval because of the massive amount of change from Piscean to Aquarian, from patriarchal to matriarchal. This dawning of the age of Aquarius, this harmony, liberation, freedom, oneness, kindness, goodness. <laughs> And how that will reign supreme. And of course, for those where that hasn't been, um, you know, within, remember, in, in a couple of shows ago, that hexagram 63, 64, where, you know, it goes chaos, calm, chaos. Because in the calm, we're at the height of the height of the patriarchal energies. So our comfort with it, our oneness with it and everything, it's, it's evolving, and yet we're, we're synergistic with it. It's comfortable. It's, it's quote-unquote the beast we know. And then all of a sudden, it's ending, the new is arriving, and it becomes chaos. It becomes uncomfortable. Because depending on which camp you're in, it's uncomfortable because a part of you, these seeds within us, these energies that we come in with as a soul, have been yearning for the new. Like, we come in early to be on time, so to speak. I know that's an oxymoron. <laughs> However, you all understand. And then there's those that come in and they don't want it to leave. They don't want this era to leave. And so they're in chaos. So you can be in chaos because you don't want it to leave. And you can be in chaos because it hasn't arrived yet. The new hasn't arrived yet. Or it's not quite up to full steam. And you're, you're wired for it. You're programmed for it. And you're, you're desirous of it. And then there's the flip side that says, we're, we don't want it to arrive. We don't want this era to go away. So that's this major overlay. And that is really a, a massive one of three messages in today's show, the awareness of that um, and these energies coming in. So main energy, main energies, main memories. Hmm. <laughs> so. You see the eight, it's uniting, unite. This is all month long, August, and it's all year next year, this uniting, coming together. And that should be so um, hopeful, so, so hopeful for everyone, because the year 2024 is about uniting, coming together. Nine is small restraint, surrender. Keep surrendering step by step the little things, and that will make everything easier. Um, I just want to bring in Ava saying that song brings me straight back to my teenage years. Exactly. Yes, it's right there, right? And Dr. Sue saying there are lots of defamation going on and yes, reckoning and being exposed to drug residues and so forth. So it's about, so remember, everything that we're being exposed to is purposeful even if it's painful, and I, and I say that with great respect and deference and care, it is not to stay, it is not to become 
the lesson. It is to transcend it. So whether it's the height of the height in a what we would deem positive or height of the height in a negative, it is to refine us, not define us. That is paramount. That is most important here. Because remember, that's the truth of the matter. It's the inner truth. It's the inner wisdom. And it's the trust in soul source connection, source, the unseen. Seven, 2023 is a seven year. It's about the army, legions, and correct discipline. Going as guided, correct discipline. And by the way, the eight, nine is a 17, going as guided. The seven is about having everything we need. And it, seven a year is also about divine. It's the foundation of God's word. It's the foundation. It's the fulfillment. So here, then, we have all of it add up to a 24. 24, return, go back. Playing a page from the past. A repeat, a do-over, a return, go back to center, go back to inner wisdom, inner truth, soul source connection. Allow ego, mind, personality to be in service of the soul, soul source connection, instead of the other way around. Patriarchal rule has been ego, ego, mind, personality leading. Aquarian age, matriarchal rule, it's internal. It's the soul source connection coming to the forefront, leading. Where ego mind personality, patriarchal, is in alignment, is in service to the soul leading. That's where we are. That's why it's, that's why it's so terrifying. That's why people are so terrified. <laughs> because they, the way that they've known of living life is over. It's changing. And so we must change with it. The arc of destiny is forward. So, you know, it's like get on at the, we've had this, you know, get on the get on the train that's leaving the station. You don't want to be on the train that's come in and docked and is going nowhere. It's over. It's done. So I guess if one wants, they can sit on that train that is docked, dead ended, docked for as long as they wish, uh, one supposes. But that doesn't but that's not the, the train you want to be on. You've got the golden ticket. You want to be on the train leaving the station, going to new places, new horizons, new experiences, new vistas. And they're clearly saying, age of Aquarius, what you never saw coming. So back to this really quickly, main energy energies. And then the 24 becomes a six, which is conflict slash destiny. And it's about letting go. See, let go of the path, make room for the present future. Open up. And that way we we really, you deliver yourselves. And it just flashed the, the um, infinity symbol. So in my mind's eye. So Lionsgate, the pinnacle yesterday, this overlay. And then we get into the, tr- the, the bulk of the message. And they said, so here's our, here's the bulk of our message. It's the main theme. Truth, Trust and inner wisdom. Bedrock principles in the book of changes. And the book of changes is like the he- the Yijing, the hexagrams, the you know, which are representative of the book of life, the book of changes, how we navigate through life. And and I love this image because here it's you know, I, I chose one that is that harks back, it's nostalgic, it hark it harks back to a a, a bygone era antiquities and so forth and yet you see the radiating light coming out of the center the wisdom the truth the knowledge the the goodness the purity the magic that's what we're talking about that's what the unseen is talking about so and our mantra this week which is quite beautiful my heart is open to receive that's going to be another message you're going to hear the word heart So the lion's gate and the age of Aquarius, this overlay, 1661, truth, trust, inner wisdom, and heart. My heart is open to receive. Because when our heart is not, if if your heart is not open, nothing's, nothing is, nothing good is happening. Because it means we're shut down, we're, we're locked in. We're not open to receive. And yet when our heart is open, and and 
there's a principle. I'm very much like this. I'm wide open. My heart is wide open. I'm wide as a person. I'm wide open until you give me a reason not to be. And what I find with that is, and even with that, there's, you know, there's, okay, you know, chances, warnings, um, you know, opportunities to correct and so forth. But again, open until you give me a reason not to be. And that doesn't mean that your heart or my heart in my example shuts down. It just says, ah, okay, you're, you've demonstrated that you may, you may be a risk or you may not be um, for me or you may, this experience may not be um, kind or whatever. Okay, well, let me just move that over. Now, should you want to come back and demonstrate that you, you know, I'm still open to receive. That's what they're talking about. They're talking about this way. So in essence, don't close your hearts and live with a closed heart. That will get you nowhere fast. Because it takes inner trust, inner truth, inner faith to live with an open heart. And know that it's okay. Oh, you're gonna someone's gonna come in and be funny with you? Mm, ah, nope. I'm whole and sovereign. I get to determine for myself what's right or true and correct, and I can place that aside. It doesn't mean do harm. It doesn't mean be closed off. It it just says mm, fair attention, as they say in French. It means have have attention, have be conscious. That's a big piece. But this. This beautiful um, mantra, my heart is open to receive. Powerful. Okay, moving through. So, first thing they said was, and we're going to read through hexagram uh, 61 and 16, but 61. Um, um, Brigitte is saying, well said. I look at those people as just not being ready, and that's okay. Exactly. It is not for it's not to allow another to change us in that way and from like in other words, what we perceive to be negative and change us so then we shut down. It's to remain this beautiful, open, vibrant being, essence, light, flower. And and say, as Brigitte just did, it's okay. You may you're not ready. When you are, let's see. Okay. But again, actions speak louder than words. And the truth of the matter, the truth, the truth of where somebody will be or is speaks for itself. The truth speaks for itself. It's a knowing. It's an energy. It's a feeling. It doesn't need to come in, in auditory words. and You'll know it. You'll feel it. Uh, this is genuine. This isn't. Okay. And again, no judgments. Ah, you're still not ready? As they say in French again, c'est pas grave. It's not serious. Because it means you're not ready. It has nothing to do with me. And when people aren't ready, we may have to deal with our sadness, our disappointment. Um, we should find a way to remove anger and replace it with disappointment, meaning we're just disappointed that things. But, but, and then find the gratitude and the purposefulness right behind it or go from, you know, gra anger to disappointment to gratitude because somewhere the truth is always consistent. That thread of truth is consistent from anger to disappointment to gratitude. It will maintain its presence, its continuity. And that, that is present. So. First thing they said was, know thyself, trust thyself. And then they put in brackets, soul self. So again, they're reminding us, it's not know thyself, ego, mind, personality. Trust thyself, ego, mind, personality. No, it's soul self. They're bringing us back. Remember, 24, return. They're bringing us back to center. Trust your soul source connection. 
I could say it a thousand times and, <laughs> and, you know, beat everybody over the head with it. And you guys, you know, but that's what they're saying. And I, so, and they're saying, you know, I, I, they're saying it to me and I'm sharing it with you all. So, um, don't shoot the messenger. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dr. Sue, right. I still love dearly, but I believe it is the book of changes. Yes. It's about progressing through. It is about remaining open. So, um, Second thing they said, wisdom, and I loved this, wisdom is a limitless source, a fountain. It's an eternal fountain. So wisdom is a limitless source, a limitless fountain. And then they said, and it reminded me, they said, drink appropriately. But they also gave me, um, you see a lot of uh, commercials in the United States are commercials for alcoholic beverages. And at somewhere in the commercial or at the end, they say, drink responsibly. So drink appropriately. Drink responsibly. Wisdom is a limitless fountain, a limitless source. Drink responsibly. It is to remind us to stay aligned, to stay centered, to remain open, to be heart-centered. Um, it does not mean to be a pushover. It does. It is not the moral of the story. Master Jesus is the one, and I find this really hard to repeat. <laughs> However, it is in the Bible. It's in the Bible. It's like, you know, Master Jesus, it's attributed saying, you, you need not cast pearls before swine. So it doesn't mean, again, to become the lesson or to, to be at the receding end of someone else's not readiness, as Brigitte articulated. It simply means to walk and uh, to drink responsibly, to walk with grace, to remain open, because that is the gift we're giving ourselves, right? That we are doing for ourselves. It has nothing to do with where they are. It has nothing to do with whether someone else is ready or not. It simply demonstrates where we are. I'm open to receive. My heart is open to receive. I walk. I drink. Wisdom, I drink responsibly. That I'm, I'm in, in every moment, I do my best to be joyful, to be heart centered, to have enthusiasm, to be in alignment with inner wisdom, soul source connection. And the more that I am that, the less the, the other things fall away. Doesn't mean they won't present themselves to say, because the universe is always good about it. Are you sure? Yes? Really? Okay, well, let's see. And they, they put it out there for us so that we transcend the lesson. Next, they gave um, item C. They said, Christ consciousness, serving the light one act at a time, one moment at a time. And then I heard the word, consistency about being consistent so christ consciousness christ the chosen one light it is about and and take the purity of the message not any dogma that may be attached to it christ consciousness is about higher consciousness purity of the light serving the light one act at a time you are, we are, 8 billion people, 8 billion humans are strands of, of Christ consciousness, of light. Serving the light, so it means serving our soul source connection, serving ourselves, one act, one moment at a time, so as to serve others, so as to serve the whole of the whole with the moral of consistency. Be consistent. And it's okay. Don't think you have to be 100% we are human <laughs> and we are divine. And the issue is that, so it's okay. We're going to, we're going to trip up. We're going to fail, if you will, but fail is faith. It's like, it's, it, it's coming into faith with, it's okay. How quickly do I pivot back to center? How quickly do I recognize what's on offer and pivot back to center? Soul source connection center. Soul self. Um, and the way this overlay worked as well, item D, it overlaid it, it, it almost covered it up in a way, and they said, up, up, and over. And then I had this image 
of like an obstacle course. And when you when people run an obstacle course and they might have a rope and they have to shimmy up the wall to get over the top of it to get to the other side. And so up, up and over this a wall obstacle course. And then they said, what's on the other side? And, and again, from shows past this, our whole focus, head down. Laser focus, Clydesdale horses with the with the blinders left so that you, your peripheral vision is removed, and our heads have been down for so long, searching for the ideal, attempting to become the ideal. Our focus has been on the climb, climbing up the mountain to get to the pinnacle, to get to the top. Most likely, never contemplating. Oh, well, what happens when we get to the top? What's on the other side? Because it's completely foreign to us. It's, it's unexperienced. We've not been there before. And so there's this beautiful, and so the Lion's Gate, in the way the papers line up, this overlay of the 8-1 to 8-30, everything, the Lion's Gate at 8-8, eight, eight, the 8-16, eight, uh, Leo New Moon, all of this bookending, overlaying this up, up, and away, up, up, and over, sorry, this wall, what's on the other side? It's fascinating because it says to us, there's something, and remember from last week's show, they said this forever changed by this time, this event. And that can be, again, Individual things in our individual lives, and then for the whole of the whole. Brigitte, this question. Are we now walking away from our lessons as a human in the old paradigm and living as a soul now? So Brigitte, it's, so it's not so much walking away from the lessons as a human, but it is going to be flipping, flipping the script. It is going to literally be it's that Mazda engine. So a Mazda, the, the vehicle Mazda, has a rotary engine. Most other vehicles have a piston engine. Pistons go up and down. A rotary engine, it moves in a triangle. So imagine that everything prior and, and is a piston engine. Highs and lows, ups and downs, all of this, um, where they are in unison but disconnected in a sense. They are independent cylinders moving up and down. And we can see, so think of ego, mind, personality, heart, soul being cylinders. So they're in one vessel, one unit, that they seemingly operate independently of one another and yet in uh, harmony or disharmony, okay? A rotary, a Mazda engine, a rotary engine is this triangle. And it's so, and imagine how that is. It's infinity, eternity, Ouroboros. It, and the point of it is, it's where everything becomes unified. So ego, mind, personality, heart, soul, spirit, everything, there's no disconnect. They are in perfect oneness with the other. And so the human experience changes. I've, the Unseen has given me this before. It's like Microsoft Office is one operating system. Macintosh Apple is a completely different operating system. Pistons, Rotary. Microsoft, Macintosh. It's like that. And so, and again, we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Because we've, for I mean, eons, we have been on a karmic cycle, reincarnational karmic cycle. And everything we've been, so every strand of our being, every past life we've ever had, every experience, our oversoul, remember the ponytail. So the oversoul is the ponytail. And within it, every strand of hair represents an incarnation an, or a, an energy an experience of our souls, of our individual oversoul. And all of the oversouls make up the whole of the whole, come together as that. So 
specifically to answer Brigitte's question in this, and this is where going back to center, coming back to center, coming back to the truth of something, the truth, and then to trust it. It means that the paradigm is going to shift. It's going to change. It's going to become unified. There won't be a separation between the mind and the heart and the soul. They'll be integrated. There'll be no disconnect. You'll just know. It's like when we get a knowing, it's like that's why they're using that term. To understand it would be like it's a knowing. When we get a knowing, we just know. There's no disconnect. It's just an understood everything, every word you could possibly state to explain or defend or, you know, talk yourself through it. Every emotion and feeling, every mental, ego, mind, personality, fear, it's all just gone because it's a knowing. It's all integrated. That is the Aquarian age. That is the golden age. That is the new. And thereby, that's where this is leading. So we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. However, we change systems. We change trains. We change trajectories. We discover what's on the other side of the peak, of the pinnacle. And and we have divine wisdom and knowledge. We have insight into what's on the other side. The ideal becomes the new reality. We've been striving for the ideal for eons, millennia, striving to get to something. Well, again, what happens when the ideal is the new reality? What happens when that is um, how things operate? That is the new operating system. It is the new order. It is the new way. And it only seems airy-fairy or foreign or whatever because we've been head down focused on the climb, focused on getting there. It's been a distant hope, dream, pipe dream, opportunity, desire. I mean, beauty pageants, world peace, world peace, world peace. Yes. See, it's been somehow distant, um, separated from us. Well, what what happens when it's integrated? What happens when it's literally on, switches turned on? It's a whole new world. It's a whole new game. And you can see me smiling. (laughs) So, all right, let's move forward with um, 1661 um, because they are beautiful and just beautiful energies. So. Hexagram 16, briefly, is enthusiasm. Its action is to excite. Hidden influence, 39. Obstruction, meaning we have to innovate. You know, they they say often, don't put your, your shoulder to the boulder. Go around it. Figure out, innovate. And so look in your personal lives at boulders, obstructions, people, places, things. Thoughts, beliefs, stories, scripts, things you've told yourself are that are true. That's an obstruction. Meaning, if it's an if it's a something's in my way or I can't. It's a it's a story. It's a, a truth. It's a story you're telling yourself. It's not the truth. It's not the story. It's a story, a truth, and it's an obstruction. So the way around it is to innovate. Step back, fresh eyes. Look to see how you can go around it, over it, through it. But not sitting there forcing it. If you're forcing it, you're not not recognizing the gift, the opportunity of of the irritant, of the obstruction. It's the pearl, the wisdom, you know, the the oyster and the pearl, without an irritant, a grain of sand, a piece of microplastic, something that might be an irritant to the oyster, there is no pearl. It must have the obstruction, the the irritant, to create the pearl. Um, Its underlining cause is small restraint, surrender. See, in every moment, just simply stop and say, and surrender. First and foremost, surrender to yourself, not to others, but to your soul self, to your soul source connection. Ego, mind, personality, I'm going to put you in the sidecar of, the, of our, motor, our motorbike. 
You're in the sidecar. Okay, soul source, we're together. We're unified. We're one. It's okay, ego, mind, personality. You're right here. I love you. We're just doing things differently. That's small restraint and surrender. That is allowing your source so that you can hear your soul, so you can hear the divine, so you can hear the unseen source, spirit, source, and symphony. You can hear them, and then it comes to you. It'll be a knowing. It'll be a word. It'll be some synchronicity of something. I was just thinking, and boom, it, it appears. That's where this, and it's done with enthusiasm. Hexgram 16, enthusiasm. And I'm just going to bring this image up again because I absolutely love it. There's a beauty in this. And, you know, in the U.S., 66, Route 66 was the original route. It's a, it's a historic route in the United States. It's a nostalgic route. It is what we, um, it, it, it pioneered the path on this whole new land, this whole new way. The ones, bookends, the 11, the way to, the way through, master number 11. The most intuitive master number. And it's a way, it's a gateway, it's a way to, it's a way through. That's what here is they're speaking to. Um, Ava is saying the 1960s created a great vision for this new age. I believe the music in particular. Exactly. There's this beauty about this pioneering. You you really kind of look at the 50s and the 60s in this way. Um, if you, from a metaphysical, uh, theosophical, uh, you go back and, and look at the number of books, theology, spirituality, metaphysicalness, the, that were created in the 1950s. The 1960s come along, and it is literally the awakening of the dream of the age of Aquarius. It's literally like, ah, oh, see, it's coming. And those seeds are planted. Then. But everything's, you know, again, from souls, you know, some coming in before that, some, and all coming in, they're pre programmed, pre programmed meaning coming in from prior, 30s, 40s, 50s, and those that are programmed, pre programmed meaning for the future, the 2020s, 2030s, 2040s, 50s, 60s, 70s in advance. And absolutely, Lorna is saying, you know, I felt that one way God speaks to us is in music. Absolutely. There's this beauty. Um, she's saying, I woke up singing Aquarius a couple of weeks ago. See, and it's and it's wonderful, isn't it? When it pops in like it did this morning for me, when I was looking just pre-show, boom, the lyrics came in. And I'm like, there you go. And it makes you smile because it's it's nostalgic in the sense that it, from a place of enthusiasm, reinvigorates the hope, the ideal, the vision, the truth of it. That's where we are. So let me bring in 61. So here we are, inner truth. Its action is trust. It's hidden influence, nourishing vision, nurture. It's to nourish these things. We've got, it, it's like anything. We exercise our bodies. We exercise with nutrition. We exercise our minds. Nurture your soul. You've got to exercise your soul. Open heart, nourishing, stay centered, soul source connection. It's like any other activity. You want to hone it. You want to empower it. You want it to be at the forefront. You've, it, you've got to make it a priority. You've got to be consistent. Christ consciousness, the light, consistency. Um, it's underlining cause is 62, small exceeding, conserve, meaning take each step as you can. So um, the beautiful, um, this first quote is so beautiful. Um, just trying to get it here. Here we go. Bring it up. Do not seek to follow in the footsteps of the wise. Seek what they sought. And there's beautiful footprints in the sand. See, it's not about following in the footsteps, mimicking or following the footsteps of the wise. It's to actually seek what they sought. So see, it's the difference. They're giving me the difference of, um, and, and forgive me, um, I believe it is in Uganda or Nigeria, 
and this woman um, and the government there, very corrupt at the time of this occurrence, and they were poor. So the people were poor, the government is corrupt, so they're they're wealthy. And this woman realized she had been gone for a little bit and came back, and she realized that the water supply and these things were changing from the natural waterways and everything. Moral of the story is she began planting trees. When she planted the trees, and I believe they were rubber trees, they she noticed that they started bringing more water. So the water, they retained water, which meant the waterways retained water. Water, well, life, life source. That then afforded trees, livestock, and so forth. So she went about teaching these the uh, women, the village women. Now, the government's laughing at her. Look at these women planting trees and so forth. Well, what they came to find out and what they actually feared and became very fearful of was the fact that by the planting, she taught these women. She empowered them by teaching them. That's the point being made. She didn't do it for them. She didn't follow in the footsteps of the wise, meaning to mimic them. She empowered these women by seeking what they sought, which was empowerment. How do I empower myself? How do I resolve the problem? How do I solve? How do I create? That's what she taught them. And all of a sudden, they became this massive force because while others were laughing at them, they were empowering themselves. <laughs> all of a sudden, they've got livestock, they've got chickens, they've got wood, they've got currency. They became powerful because they enriched themselves. Very powerful story. I'm going to put that I'll put that up on the link in uh in the show description on on Facebook because it's a very powerful beautiful story um and what they went through. This is about don't mimic don't follow the footsteps of the wise. Seek what they sought. What they seek what what they were seeking was wisdom, empowerment, enlightenment, expansion. Seek that, and it will do all of those things with you and for you. That's the moral. So, um, as one of the last principles in the Book of Changes, the development of inner truth is perhaps the core message of this entire book. Like Kung Fu, which carefully develops the physical and mental in harmony, Zong Fu, which is inner truth, has a similar message about how the inner and outer worlds align. In the introduction to the Book of Changes, we are told to treat each principle as our parents. We learn from nature and discover the part of us that is unchanging and thriving within. Your soul, it's unchanging, it's true north. Your soul source connection is unchanging, true north, divine, neutral, good. Um, tau, active in the individual, is called Te. It is our inner blueprint or design which we will evolve to become. In fact, much of life is an opportunity to peel away the layers of conformity that, we keep, that keep us from being who we are meant to be. See, there's 2,000 plus years of patriarchal rule. Conformity. Conforming, conforming, conforming. And then the chaos because the opportunity to peel away the layers of conformity, of structure, They've served us until they don't. Now we peel them away. We make space for the new. And we allow that to come forth so that our true nature, our inner truth, because it's already, it's predestined, it's planned. The soul, it says, I'm coming for this time. I'm coming in to be here at this time. I'm coming in as a baby today to be here for this time in the future times. That is, that is the destiny of what we're talking about. Um, inner truth is a perspective where we stand upon the firm soil of our unique nature and observe events for how they are coaxing our inner nature forward. In acupuncture, Zong Fu, inner truth, is the Lung One point called the inner treasury, and we see how the development of inner truth is the realization of the wellspring within. Lungs, we cannot live without air. 
that unseen magic nutrient air that nourishes us, that inner treasury, that life force. Remember, they breathed, you know, it speaks in, in uh, not mythology, but in, in ancient, uh, from Mesopotamia, uh, Sumeria, Egypt, the breath of life, this inner treasury. Um, we move into life and are buffeted about by activity, following others, misreading the signs and casting judgment. At some point, we can become lost. What will it take to return you to your authenticity, to your soul source connection, to your, your divinity, your true nature? What is needed to allow you to quiet the mind of worry and see the beauty of grace unfolding in each moment? It's what we spoke about a moment before where we step back. We go from anger to disappointment to gratitude to grace. Ah, I see. I transcend the lesson. I don't become it. My experiences re refine me. They don't define me. Um, one word. She uses, uh, this is Carrie Hung from CafeOsol.com. One word, cultivation. Yes, to cultivate, to be consistent, cultivate, um, work out, a, a train, experience. I would also say one word, surrender. Surrendering to your soul source connection. Surrendering to your soul self. Placing your ego mind personality in service to, in the sidecar, directly behind. Because we need a healthy ego mind personality. It's just in alignment with, in service to a greater, higher, good, ideal. The underlying cause of small exceeding suggested flying under the radar, tending to the small things and reducing visibility. But now it is time to go out and test your vision while interacting with others. Experience leads us towards what is needed at different times to reveal us to ourselves. See, we go out and we interact with the other characters in our play. On a soul level, we've asked them, Places, people, places, things, elements. We've asked them to play a role in our play, to be a character in our play. And so experience leads us towards what is needed at different times to reveal us to ourselves. It's so that we see ourselves better. When you are centered in Tay and observant but not reactive, life seems to flow more gently. When you believe you must be like others, life will prod you back upon your path, which can feel uncomfortable if you are unwilling to go there. See, again, that's the cosmic two by four coming out. Wham! You don't want the cosmic two by four. You want to do this willingly, effortlessly, easily, proactively. Nourishing vision as the hidden influence appears in many of the hexagrams because we must go forward and we must also take time to turn within. The arc of destiny is forward. This is what happens when we dream. We have experiences and place judgments upon them that are sometimes incorrect. Ego would have us cons uh, constantly avoiding any threat. So ego, ego mind personality would have us constantly avoiding any threat to how it upholds the status quo. I want to keep things exactly as it is. Well, that's not life. Life is all about change, advancement, arc of destiny forward, moving forward. When you observe nature, you will see that finding protection to remain stagnant is not an option. All things in life are growing and all things are evolving from the blueprint or seed within. So in other words, your blueprint, your soul, its blueprint, its soul contract, its true north, its its soul source connection desire is evolving forward. It's, it's constantly evolving and moving because it already has the plan. Only the ego mind personality is a plan, wanting to keep things like the status quo, which becomes stagnant. No matter what is unfolding around you, take time out to ensure that you are being true to yourself. Nothing can hide from nature. React less and simply be responsive. See, it's that respond, don't react. Proactive, not reactive. 
as the image of an arrow hitting the center of a target and a bird's claw encircling a hatchling, inner truth offers the idea of both capture and protection. By holding to your center, you will always hit the mark. It's so true, so powerful. It's the truth. It's the truth. Um, there is much more to hexagram 61. However, I'm mindful of the time, so I'm going to place this as I do in the show comments um, for you all to uh, see that. I just wanted to I'll end with this other beautiful quote. A heart that remains open can be guided by inner truth. That is the moral of the story. A heart that remains open can be guided by inner truth. You remain, you're trusting your soul source connection. You are trusting yourself. Others may come as characters in your play. However, the truth is an open heart, a a heart that remains open is guided by inner truth. And that inner truth is your soul source connection. There is no greater higher power. And it is to remember that, to connect with it, to um, exercise it. um, Because this Lion's Gate, this 8 1 to 8 30 time frame, it's a pinnacle moment. And it's all about what you never saw coming. It's what we it's what we've dreamed about. It's what we've hoped for. It's what we've strived for. And it's the reality of the situation is that at some point we are forever changed by this time in this moment. We advance. It's just that it's just that pure and that simple. <laughs> so um, I will leave you all with that, and we will see where this all leads uh, next week on the 16th. Uh, until then, be be open, be fluid, be mindful, and just be happy. Celebrate you in the in the smallest things. In the smallest things, celebrate. Celebrate them. Celebrate you. Knowing that there's a whole new, there's a whole new order. There's a whole new world. Until then, be well. We will see you next week. You've been listening to Dear James Live. Gain intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions and so much more by tuning in next week and visiting DearJames.com.